Good to see you once again here on WTVG 13 ABC's In Touch program for this Sunday. My name Jeff Smith and over the last couple of weeks new information coming into the 13 ABC newsroom looking at the numbers of opioid related deaths, overdose deaths here in the state of Ohio and disparagingly enough that number is going up in those numbers last year and we're already off to a bad start here in 2018. Want to introduce to you the chair for the UT Department of Psychiatry. That is Dr. Cheryl McCullum Smith joining us here to talk about maybe I guess we can kind of approach this conversation here for our folks at home as a retooling uh, a re-education as it were for not only our college students but some of our already medical professionals out there first and foremost I want to give you the opportunity to talk a little bit let's talk about a 400 and listen to this folks a $450,000 grant from the Center for Substance Abuse Treatment to expand education about opioid use disorder across all disciplines within UT's College of Medicine and Life Sciences. Quite an mm -hmm. ac accomplishment. Talk about it a little bit. Oh, well, thank you. We were very happy to get this award. Um, the opioid epidemic has just been a tsunami It's mm -hmm. um, for the medical field and it's been very difficult to know how to address it. And one thing we know is that physicians practice a lot based on what they were taught as medical students. And we'll talk more about yeah. retraining older physicians, but we wanted to give our training physicians, medical students, to the tools they need from the beginning mm -hmm. in how to prescribe opioids and how to recognize opioid use disorder and to prevent it and treat it. Are we rewriting the medical books? I mean, kind of? <laughs> Somewhat, yes. Yeah. You know, when I went through medical school, many of us were taught that you need, treating pain was one of the core things that we needed to do and that we didn't need to worry about addictions due to, with opioids if we were treating pain. But we've since learned that that's not true. Yeah. And we have other ways to treat pain and and, and different strategies for approaching pain. It doesn't mean we don't want to use opioids, and, and that's also a concern. We don't want medical students to be so fearful of using opioids at all that they have a zero tolerance policy. And, and, and one of the things that you point out as far as this grant is concerned, and once again, Dr. Cheryl McCollum-Smith joining us from the UT Department of Psychiatry, you, you talk about going across all disciplines and mm -hmm. looking, I mean, when you think about dentistry, when you think about psychiatry, when you think about just general practice, obviously it goes beyond tile and all and aspirin uh, at times when you're dealing with pain management so how do you get through to these doctors and we talked about it as uh, a, a proactive stance to something being reactive because right. you have to go back and look at it again all, across all these uh, disi uh, these disciplines correct that's right so in the first years of medical school it's the classwork and there's already a number of lectures about the basic neurobiology of opioids and how the pharmacology, but it's not really been knitted together. And so we're stitching all those pieces together into a coherent curriculum. So they know what they're, the, what they're being taught about yeah. applies to their patients they're gonna be seeing later. In the third and fourth year, medical students rotate through each specialty. And so we will be putting modules into each specialty. So when you're on surgery, for instance, you'll learn what's appropriate to prescribe after discharge from a surgery, how to tell how yeah. much pain your patient's in and not to just automatically write a prescription for a month's supply of a standard opioid. Is this along the lines of prevention or is mm -hmm. this going to be treatment as well for those who are already addicted? Right, so we will be simultaneously, as, as you put it well, being proactive and reactive. Mm -hmm. So we want to prevent more patients from becoming addicted to opioids by um, changing the way that we practice in the future and also making sure that we are addressing their pain. And we need to have a sensitive, patient-centered process to help the patients and also help their physicians to manage people who are on high doses of opioids or who have developed yeah. opioid use disorders. Talk to me about these, I guess, first year, second year college students who are thinking medical profession might be for me, but are they the new front line as far as this defense that we're putting up against this epidemic and maybe even future epidemics? Right, so we need to make sure that we're training everyone on, on how to approach this and how to recognize it. So our first and second year medical students 
they, they want to go into fields where they feel like they can help. And right now, I think they're overwhelmed and with the opioid epidemic and, and are concerned about going into fields where they might be asked to prescribe more pain medications or on that pain. point On that point, let me ask you, and I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt, but is it weaning some of them away from the field, thinking so, this, is, this is too much to take? Um, I don't know about the field of medicine, yeah. but perhaps. I mean, I know it's a concern. Medical students anecdotally have told me about this. So what we want to do is to give people the Overwhelming, tools. I guess is yeah. a good word to look at, but yeah. go ahead. Yeah, you know, to think about um, managing. Right now, um, the state and the federal government have set up regulations for prescribing that you need to check in a database. And all of those things are really good, but mm -hmm. they can seem like overwhelming to folks. So the program that we're developing, we have another program for our providers that's a Medicaid um, um, quality grant. And we are putting in place these screens and these tools, but we're helping our providers as well as our patients by providing care managers that are helping folks navigate through this to get patients and providers education on pain medications and on alternatives to opioids for pain medication. What do you say to the public out there who is listening and thinking, okay, am I in good hands in future days thinking about going to the doctor and how this will be, how quickly are we gonna see this change over or are doctors already starting to implement this in their practice? So our goal is to have this generation of medical students fully trained and they they train us, you know, as they're attending physicians, they can train us. And we're also with the Medicaid project working on training all of our physicians. And those will be our physicians who are training more. So it will be reciprocal. Yeah. So I think back to um, a similar type of crisis. I went to medical school um, at the beginning or beginning of the middle of the AIDS crisis. Mm -hmm. And I can remember people saying, oh, they can't make us wear latex gloves. That will interrupt our whole practice. Well, can you imagine going into an office and having right. any sort of an examination without your doctor wearing latex gloves right now? Mm -hmm. Right, so this is similar, right? Um, we need to just change the mindset and in institute some different processes. And we think it will be a lot easier for for physicians and patients once we get these processes in place. I don't know if it's hypothetical, but I mean, is this hopefully happening across the nation as far as UT, what we see uh, you guys kind of leading by example here with this effort, but uh, is it also happening across the country? Or do you know of other educational institutions that are doing the same exact thing? Well, there are some others, but UT has been singled out. So getting this grant is phenomenal um, for us. We've been recognized as a center that can do this. And so the goal of our medical student grant is to develop a comprehensive curriculum for all four years of medical school that we've tested and shown to work. And we will export that and present it and export it for other wow. medical schools to use. So we will be the model system what? for opioid education. Yeah. And similarly, the quality grant for, um, for opioid use, um, there are um, four um, institutions, academic institutions in the state selected to um, test new models of addressing opioid use. It's us, Case Western, um, um, University of Cincinnati, and Ohio State. So University of Toledo is playing a pivotal role, wow. and we are the group that's testing um, our group is testing this yeah. care manager innovation, which I think is so important because we're supporting not only the patients, but the providers. I'll tell you what, folks, obviously we've had a lot of just tragic stories over the last couple of years talking about this epidemic and how it's affected so many right here in the Buckeye State and elsewhere around the region. But it is going to be interesting and I guess eye-opening to watch some of the research that is happening and some of the efforts that are being made right here in Toledo. Doctor, great insight. We appreciate it. Good to talk to you. Thank you so much. Absolutely. And now you are more in touch.